So welcome to this new video of my YouTube series Getting Started with Eclipse Micro Profile 3. In this section I'm going to cover the Micro Profile REST Client 1.3 specification. So if you've watched one of my previous videos, for example the video of Open Tracing, um, to, to make it work we had to do a JuxRS client call and we manually created the client via the client builder and then instantiated a web target to talk to the external REST endpoint. So with MicroProfile REST client this um, external calls to other services can be made much more simpler. So we can have just a interface and declare how the remote REST endpoint looks like and the, implement, uh, the library will provide us with the implementation to actually call the, the endpoint. So if you're familiar with Fane, for example, this is quite similar to the, the Fane library. As an example, I will call this JSON placeholder REST API. This is a sample dummy API available in the internet. So there are different resources, posts, comments, albums, photos and they all have um, REST conform um, endpoints to call. So we can get all posts, we can get a post by its ID and also post a new one, update one and much more. So this I will use to show you how to work with the MicroProfile REST client specification. So what you have to do is just declare a, an interface and model the remote endpoints using the well-known JuxRS endpoints. So here, for example, we have this JSON placeholder client, which acts as a placeholder later on to call this remote um, sample endpoint in the internet. And here I am modeling everything we need. So the first one is a, a get to this endpoint. So this will return all posts in a JSON array. And what you see here, you can also use uh, additional data to add to the path. So here, query param, for example, if I have an order by. What you can also do is add path variables if you want to get a specific post by its ID here. And here you might have already seen at the return type, we can also tell this MicroProfile REST client that we want uh, this as async result. So here I'm adding completion stage and the implementation under the hood will make sure that this is executed asynchronously and we'll get a completion stage back. So what's also possible is to post data alongside the HTTP body. This is usually the case when you create a new entity. So here when we post to this endpoint, I'm passing a JSON object alongside this method. So in the background, this will be added to the HTTP body. Another thing MicroProfile REST client is able to do is to add headers. So there are two ways of adding headers. You either use this add client header param on either the method level or you can also add it to the class level or the interface level. This will then be present at all calls. If you just want it for a specific one, for example, let's say for updating, we would need some kind of authorization. So then we can here add the name of the header and the value of this header. So this can be either static or we can reference a method which evaluates the, the result here. So as an example, I'm generating the auth header here. So let's say it would be basic auth and this would be username and password and this would be then put into here to add the header. What you can also do if this is more dynamic and you want to put it from the calling side you can add a header param for example here the x request id so let's say we get a param from a, a different service and have to pass it this version is not good enough for us we can also extend here the the method with a new attribute and pass this header alongside calling it and this will be then put into the HTTP header for us. So that's how you define it. Um, what you have to do next is to, if you use CDI to inject it, you have to register it with this annotation. 
and if you use JaxRS uh, filters, um, you can also register them on the interface level here with this register provider. Here I'm registering a, a simple client response filter. So this will just print out the, the status code we get to give you an example how this works. Next, um, the MicroProfile REST client specification has a nice integration with MicroProfile config. So as you might have seen it here in the interface, I did not specify any URL at all. So this can be done in a MicroProfile config file. And there's also much more to, to be done in this file. So you can also specify the, the connect timeout in milliseconds and also the read timeout. Or you could also manually register providers here on the comma separated list of them. But for now here, I'm just specifying this is the endpoint we will call and these are our timeouts. To now show you it live and in action, I've created this post service. Um, CDI bean um, says a observer. So as we are not having EJB in the startup annotation with MicroProfile, I'm using this trick to somehow mirror this behavior. So this method will kick in once the application scopes are, or the application scope is initialized, and then the, uh, our methods are called. So let's start with the first example. Um, as I've said, this Juxer, uh, this MicroProfile REST client can be injected via CDI. So here to inject it, you also have to annotate it with this REST client annotation and register it on the interface level. But what you can also do is to manually bootstrap your REST client to re and then use the REST client builder here. So I wanted to show you that this is also possible. Then you get a builder pattern and can specify all the parameters you need. So here we have to then manually specify which URL to use. If you want a filter, you can register it in the timeout and then can say build it. And once we have an instance, we can now we now have access to all of our methods. So let's see here. And then we can say get post by ID, for example. Let's say we want the first one. And as this is the, the async variable uh, version, I'm using then accept and print it out. So let's uncomment it and see. So in the background, Open Liberty is running, and I'm using watch and deploy to deploy each new change to the application server. As you see it here, um, once the application is deployed, we now see our output here and we get a 200 and the result of the external REST endpoint here. So let's have a look at the next one. The next one is get all posts. This will now use the CDI beam, so no manual bootstrapping required here. And here we use um, to get all posts and pass a query param. Let's say we want the order direction ascending. And once we save this application, um, it's deployed again to Open Liberty, and we should see it in the console. Yes, now it's here. So it took some time. We see here get all post status code again. As we register it on the interface level, we get the status code here and all of our data. So I could show you all, but they are all straightforward. Another thing I want to show you is this update thing where we pass data alongside the HTTP body. So we here construct our JSON object. So we want to update a post, for example, and we just pass it to our method here. And also here the update post by ID has this header which we can pass from our caller side. So here I'm just using a UUID to show you it. And once I save it and it's deployed, we should see the result. Yeah, so here you see the result of our updating. So we're again getting a 200 and the updated post is passed alongside the response and we can print it in here and yeah that's for the post 
I'm not going to show you all the other one because they're pretty straightforward. You can clone the GitHub repository and try it out for yourself. You can use the build and run scripts to locally start the application server and as a Docker container and see the output on your machine. That's all I want to do, share with you about the MicroProfile REST client specification. Have fun using it. Mm -hmm.